Well, today we are going to start on a topic called single phase phase diagrams or single phase equilibria. But before that, I would like to give you some recapitulations of the last lecture. I think in the last lecture, I discussed with you about the equilibrium in heterogeneous systems like mixture of water and ice. What are the thermodynamic rules of heterogeneous equilibrium? Obviously, for heterogeneous equilibrium, temperature and pressure must be kept constant, but other than that, one most important rule must be satisfied. The rule is that rule is known as the chemical potential of any component in all the phases must be equal. So, I just write down again this equation for heterogeneous system the chemical potential of any component A must be equal in all phases. Suppose there are three phases, three phases alpha, beta, gamma. So, chemical potential of any component A must be same in all the phases. And I told you the meaning of chemical potential. It is a measure of potential of any component in a mixture of many components. Suppose you have a phase alpha and this phase contains three components A, B, C. So, therefore, chemical potential of A in alpha means the ability of alpha to react with the other components in that phase or rather in a thermodynamic sense it means change of free energy, total free energy when infinitesimal amount of A is added to alpha that is what is known as the chemical potential of alpha. This is represented by a letter Greek letter known as mu. So, in a pure component chemical potential is represented by mu, but with a superscript 0. So, let us now look into this I just wanted to tell you again that for a system like this <coughs> the free energy curve is given by a parabola as a function of composition for a fixed temperature. So, pure ends are given A and B. The chemical potential of pure A is given by mu A superscript 0. Chemical potential of pure B is given by mu B potential superscript 0. But the chemical potential of a component A or B in this phase alpha can be measured using a construction known as tangent to curve. How do I do it? Suppose I have a point A, a point C here suppose, in this case I have marked as by red point C and I want to know the chemical potential of A and B in alpha phase for composition C. So, P and G for the composition point C is given by G x because x is the composition of C given by this point C. Now, if the way I do it is that I draw a tangent to this curve at point C. Now, if I extend this tangent to the both sides, it will meet A and B axis, the vertical axis corresponding to pure A and pure B and that means the cross section of these uh, points at pure A and pure B will correspond to the chemical potential of A and B respectively. That is how it is measured. So, if you want to measure chemical potential suppose at a point like this x 1 here I am drawing. So, I can do by drawing a tangent like this and so therefore, this point will correspond to chemical potential of B at x 1. Similarly, this point will correspond to chemical potential of A at x 1. That is how we do. So, if you, if, if you have the free energy curve to in front of you, you can basically measure chemical potential of the components at any composition by doing this construction. What is the utility of this? So, this that means we can actually define this uh, free energy curve using chemical potential by this way, it is a straight line equation where the tangent is a straight line, we can derive that. What is the utility of that? Let us do that. 
utility of this is this that we can apply this this chemical potential equal chemical potential law uh, thermodynamical rule rather mu a alpha equal to mu a gamma mu a beta uh, mu b alpha equal to mu b gamma for a two phase system and find out its equilibrium conditions. So, that is how it is done suppose I have a free, free energy versus composition curve for two phases of steel alpha and gamma alpha is a VCC solution gamma is a FC solution and it contains carbon as a important solute element that is why the free energy is plotted as a function of carbon. So, there are two curves G alpha and G gamma I marked it at a temperature T 1 suppose. So, now if you look at these two curves carefully these two curves intersect at a point like this which is suppose O I marked it. So, that means that at this point these two curves have same free energies correct, but you know to find out the equilibrium between these two curves easiest way to do is by drawing a common tangent passing through the point at which the compositions of the alloy lie. Suppose the overall alloy composition is x bar, so I draw a vertical line and it is I draw a tangent between the two curves passing through this point. So, when I extend this tangent to the both ends of A and B that is carbon end this is R n end I can find out the, the chemical potentials of A and B. Now, as far the thermodynamical rule for the phase equilibrium heterogeneous system we can always see that this rule mu a alpha equal to mu a gamma satisfied and the a end similarly mu b alpha equal to mu b gamma satisfied at the b end that is what we always find. So, this is the way actually we can find out the compositions of the phases which are in equilibrium like here because the common tangents like sitting on these two points this point and this point. So, if I draw a vertical down the composition axis meeting points will be the equilibrium concentration of alpha in equilibrium with gamma similarly equilibrium concentration of gamma in equilibrium with alpha. So, I can easily find out that that is that is possible. So, that is the beauty of this heterogeneous phase equilibrium and in a nutshell this gives you an idea of the phase diagram and we will see how it can be utilized. So, what do you learn? We all know that the for the equilibrium to be satisfied there is a common notion that the chemistry or the compositions of a particular phase suppose this is composition of A component A means iron at the alpha gamma interface will be equal to gamma alpha interface at the interface between gamma and alpha should be equal, but that is not true that is not at all true. Similarly, for B that is not true what is true is the chemical potentials. So, that means the chemical potential actually drives any phase transformation process that is what you must remember in if you want to uh, know about phase transformation, phase diagrams and other things this is a very important consequence of the of the derivation which I have done in the last class. So, that is you must not forget in any of the lectures so I will go ahead. So, you know in if you look at oceans there are a lot of big icebergs we know the titanic crashed because of the collision with one of the icebergs not direct by side collisions. Now, what is the factor which stabilizes this icebergs in the in the sea pool of water it is the chemical potential. So, therefore, the chemical potential of the water H 2 O as a component is same must be same both in water liquid water and the ice. Similarly, chemical potential of salts sodium chloride, potassium chloride or many other salts which are present in the ocean water must also be same in both the liquid water and the ice that is so actually this kind of two phase equilibrium can be attained in a vast oceans and this is true for our system also this is very uh, well true in our systems why because in our systems we always know that there are multiple phases and when you have multiple phases present in our system these multiple phases will always has to be uh, you know it equilibrium under the conditions when the chemical potential of a component in both the phases are equal. Okay. So, with this I will just like to tell you that this is true for ideal solutions mostly, but this can be extended 
for other solutions like non ideal solutions where there is a positive deviation or a negative deviation this is negative deviation this is a positive deviation we all know that basically this is the raoult's law for the ideal solutions the activity equal be, will be equal to the mole fraction activity is equal to mole fraction correct but whenever you have a deviation from the raoult's law we can draw these diagrams this kind of plots so this can be actually used for this is this, this this such a, a large deviations may not allow you to uh, you know uh, thermodynamics to, to be uh, satisfied for such a, a chemical potentials rule but for larger composition range even for non ideal solution also it is possible well normally chemical potential is represented by, the, by this way how it is done you see here chemical potential of any component a in alpha is equal to chemical component of a pure a that is called superscript 0 a mu a 0 superscript alpha plus r t log a alpha what is log a log a is the logarithmic of the activity so if the activity is, is equal to activity is equal to suppose the mole fraction then i can write down this equation like this very easily mu a 0 alpha equal to r t ln x a alpha that is for the ideal solution, but for non ideal solution x a will be replaced by activity and you also know that activity can be related with, with this uh, constant gamma in the concentrations normally non ideal solutions though therefore we can replace that. So, in that case if this is what is the rule for activity so and a follows this then we can write down the other equation that is the gamma is equal to mu a is equal to mu a 0 alpha plus r t ln gamma x a that means it is equal to mu a alpha plus r t ln gamma plus ln x a this can be written we all know that this is possible. So, therefore, for any ideal or non-ideal solution does not matter we can modify this uh, chemical potential rule and explain the whole stuff. I hope you, you understood that. Now, I just do not want to spend lot of time on this diagram uh, that you know it is basically nothing but a delta g value as a function of x. So, the non ideality or the deviations from ideality will also depend on the, the uh, h delta h mix and uh, delta h mix is normally if it is negative and like this uh, parabola this is easy to find out the solutions but if it is uh, the shapes like that given then its deviation will happen. We will discuss about this when you derive the quasi chemical approach let me just go ahead and discuss with the single phase equilibrium. So, by this I hope you understood that for any phase equilibrium to be satisfied the uh, this thing which you should understand is that the chemical potential must be equal. So, let me just move ahead with, with the single phase uh, equilibria single component phase systems are basically like water carbon dioxide oxygen nitrogen pure iron pure silicon dioxide sulfur there are many single component systems and we need to understand them because they are the ones which actually satisfy which gives you very nice idea about how the phase transformation start so these systems are also known as these systems also known as your unary systems because they comp they are single component u we know binary so therefore binary means two components unary means single component system so there are many single component system i'm just giving you some metals here example like actinium silver aluminium americium gold boron okay beryllium bismuth calcium cadmium and you can see that they exist in all phases solid liquid gas and they have all kinds of uh, you know uh, different solid also they can have different phase like alpha beta calcium has two alpha beta phases. So, to know their phase transformations we must understand the basic philosophy of that. So, let us first review okay Be next 10 minutes I will have to review before I go for the next class where I am going to discuss about the this phase transformations. So, I just here uh, plotted any parameter s you know review C p h and uh, the entropy. So, I know that C p can be termed as a a plus B t. So, that is a straight line 
A is a constant, B is a constant, B are constant, T is a temperature in absolute and this is what is your enthalpy, enthalpy what integration of CP, CPT enthalpy. So, if I integrate that function I get the actual stuff. Now, yeah, I can also uh, uh, take the entropy, entropy is nothing but uh, integration of CP by T dt. Okay. Similarly, I can get minus T s, minus T s is like this. So, G will be like this, G is a green curve which you can see is a basically H minus T s, G is nothing but H minus T s which can be obtained from H and T, H and S easily. So, you can see here that G is equal to minus T s at this point because T and T s are minus equal and these are the uh, difference of uh, the uh, uh, difference of these values as compared to T s and H. So, therefore, G is basically a resultant function between H and T s. So, now if I take it multiple phases what happens? I have already done that. If I take a multiple phases, so solid and liquid then I know that equilibrium will be given by the same uh, value of G and S and that is the this point where both solid and liquid should exist and therefore, the temperature less than this value the G will be less than G L, G S will be less than G L and solid is more stable that is what you see here solid is lower energy than the liquid more stable. On the other hand this side G S is more than G L so therefore, liquid is more stable than the solid. We can do this thing also in terms of uh, your and this is the melting temperature at which both the curves intersect and slopes of the curves are basically define the entropies. Now, let us consider in terms of delta G that is very easy this is G L and G S let us do it quickly and delta G is nothing but difference of these two this will be a straight line equation and where it will meet the delta G will be 0 and if you see here as you go temperature less than this lower than the temperature at which delta G is 0 you have a resultant delta G values which is positive and if you go higher than that this temperature then delta G become negative and that is how actually we can actually get idea about whether delta G will be the delta G is change of transformation from liquid solid less than 0 a temperature less than the melting temperature T m okay, above the temperature is more than 0 and that is how actually it is possible to have liquid solid liquid become solid at lower than the melting temperature or solid become liquid at the, the melting above the melting temperature because delta sign of delta G actually tells you exactly the transformation uh, direction change which way this transformation will happen. Now, uh, before I go into the uh, next lecture I just wanted to delve dwell little bit upon this ok. See normally we have done all this calculation function of uh, temperature keeping the pressure constant why? because if I change both the variables together I cannot have a good handle on the stuff. So, that means the pressure is always kept at one atmospheric pressure whereas, temperatures are varied and all the phi energy functions entropy and enthalpy and phi energies are actually measure as a function of temperature. If that is what is so then we can actually easily uh, you know do this calculation at one atmospheric pressure, but if you want to do this uh, phase diagrams for the single component system we need to understand what is the effect of pressure on the transformation temperatures that is why we actually need to know the effect of pressure which I will do in the next lecture.